On this episode, Missy and I are talking about overdoing. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace, and this is the podcast where Missy and I talk about different ways that you can improve your life and find peace to your life and do it in very practical, everyday ways. So, this is an interesting topic, Missy. Yeah, we. I think, uh, I think we both need it. <laughs> yes, we do. That's why I jumped right into it and kept a very short intro but how you doing i'm doing pretty good doing a lot um you know new house uh, new addition to the family um my niece has come to live with us for for those of you who don't know um so and then the kids are homeschooling i have a very successful career uh doing my life coaching as well as uh, um podcasts um and other many other um members uh memberships that i'm a part of so um trying to contribute to society in a positive manner and um and it's a lot of doing and so um you know i uh, th- thought that would be a good topic for us so that we can kind of explore what happens when we start to overdo and and uh how it affects us uh, mentally and spiritually how about mm-hmm. you no, the, this is a perfect topic. Uh, so similar things are going well, but uh, life has settled a little bit with um, all the moving that we were doing and uh, the kids are now close by, which means the grandkids are close by, which is all wonderful stuff. Yeah. Uh, keeps, keeps us hopping. Um, but kind of the same thing, you know, there's a, a lot going on with um, my life coaching practice and the podcast and my full-time job and um, my teaching over the college. Actually, they're doing these half semesters now because everything is online. So we just finished um, the one semester. So there's a lot of grading to get done and entering final grades and answering student emails why they got a certain grade. Uh, Does everybody um, else hear him getting buried under under mounds and mounds and mounds of stuff? Because I hear it. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there was a lot. But um, on the plus side, I'm not teaching the second part of this uh, typical semester. So I don't have students again until mid-January. So, oh, uh, nice little break. That's yes. great. So that'll be a little break from teaching and give me some time actually to do some research update so my data and slides and so i like to do that (laughs) you're cracking yes you notice (laughs) that that is a good point i missed that (laughs) That, that's a good point i i uh i I want to hear that you you're hanging out in the shed throwing a fishing pole smoking a stogie whatever you know and just chilling out for a while that's what i want to (sighs) hear sounds nice doesn't it (laughs) Could I be doing that and researching my latest data and slide set for absolutely, my class? <laughs> absolutely. If that's what you know, here's the thing: when it feels good, when it's fun, when it's like uh, it's it's a passion, it's not work. I don't feel like it's 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 when you have the ability to go from um, more of a masculine mindset of just checking off the box: did we get it done? Did we get it done? Mm-hmm. To being in that creative space where you know. Um, you're, you're driven to, to do this in a, in a, in a creative way. And, or, or I should say in a creator mentality, um, which is more of the feminine energy, you know, uh, feminine side of the brain, uh, hunter gatherer kind of mentality, similar to that. And, Mm -hmm. um, that's when we have fun. It was like, so, so today it was like, yes, we have scheduled a podcast and, but this is fun for both of us. So it's not like another thing that we have to do. It's something that we get to do because we're excited about it. Exactly. And and that's what makes all the difference, you know, and um, I was recently telling uh, one of my clients that who's, you know, trying to open up their own business. And 
I'm doing some business consulting and helping them to do that. And that's one of the things that I stress that, you know, creating a new business, being an entrepreneur is all about creativity. Yeah. And creativity needs to be fun. Yeah. And if you're not having fun at what you're creating, then you're going to need to step back a little bit, you know, so that even when a person gets really stressed or it's like one thing after another, which is going to be sometimes. Yeah. You still have to, you know, be able to step back and say, am I still having fun? Is this still enjoyable for me and what I want to do? It, it's uh, it's it reminds me what you're saying is uh, of one of my uh and I'm sure everybody has heard this, but one of my coaches refers to it as human doing instead of human being, right? And we try to yep. muscle our way through as, as humans, um, we get overwhelmed. We, we're, you know, we're not able to get it all done. We start to get mentally drained from the processes that we, that we get to do as humans rather than um, being like, you know what, this is all going to work out in, in good time. I might not get it all done today. And if I get it all done today, guess what? There's going to be more stuff to do tomorrow. So always more to yeah, do. exactly. So, um, and Abraham Hicks says, right, you're never going to get it done and you can't get it wrong. So, you know, just chill out about it. Uh, yeah. And it is, it, it just, it, it really takes the, the beingness of, of where we're coming from, the creative, the fun, the joyful out of um, the equation when we are just muscling our way through it to get it done. Right. And I'm very and, and guilty. The, I'll be the first to admit. <laughs> well, I think we both are on, on that yeah. part, but, uh, but it, it kind of reminds me of, of the thing that, you know, when we talk about stress and anxiety and, you know, I, I always let my clients know that, if your goal is to get rid of your stress, you're never going to reach your goal. You know, like we can't ever be totally stress free. It's all about reducing it and coping with it in a healthy yeah. way. Yeah. But I think the same thing with the work, you know, it's when people say, well, if I work really hard right now, I can be done with my work. Are we ever really done with the work? No, there's always another phone call. There's always another report mm -hmm. that needs to be done. There's always somebody else calling you, asking you questions. And, you know, that's just the way that it goes. I mean. Yep. And I, and, and I think if we change that mindset to that, you know, that don't look at it as, well, let's work really, really hard to get it done because mm -hmm. I can finish it. Maybe we need to start looking at it from the other viewpoint that just do what you can do because it's always going to be there. It's, it's not going to go away. Well, I always have a plan when I get up. I'll be the first to admit, like, this is my intention. OK. And I know that by the end of the day, I don't feel guilty anymore if I don't have all those things done, because I know I've gotten many other things done during the day that and and I, I also feel like I'm one of those people who can get things done really fast you know so if I get my focus on and get my intent and it's something that has to be done by a certain time I can get it done it'll take no no time at all but when I let go of my plan when I just go with whatever comes my way I feel good I feel at ease I feel like yep. you know I don't suffer because I'm beating myself up or I'm not I'm not dealing with a slave mentality you know or I'm not killing myself you know to, mm -hmm. to just hurry up and do something and then when the end of the day comes sometimes that's not until five or six o'clock sometimes it's not till eight o'clock but then I can relax and go okay you know now I can cook which I love to do and I can spend time with my family again something I love to do and it's not so much doing, it's the, oh, I get to add this spice and, and create this uh, chicken Parmesan and let's, let's change the recipe. And, and then I become creative, right? In right. that doing. Um, and it's fun, you know, but we, we, when we attach to a plan, it seems as if we suffer when the outcome is not what we predict. Exactly. And we're setting up sometimes the unreasonable expectations. Yeah. So, you know, we, we have all these things that we're going to do or we start telling your, you know, ourselves, well, we must do it or the shoulds, which we really need to avoid, yeah. you know, because all of these things are just adding into expectations that may not be realistic. Yeah. And, you know, you, you're really right that when we finish certain tasks, then we're going to feel a lot more relaxed and we can move on to the next. But if we're putting all these unreasonable expectations, then we're never going to meet those expectations 
and we're never going to end up relaxing. And when, what, how are we going to feel successful? Like if you have, exp- now don't get me wrong. I, I am all for people making goals and setting themselves and, oh, and yeah. even oh, putting themselves on a timeline. That. That's great. And a lot of people accomplish things that way. So I'm not saying don't set yourself a goal or an intention, but you know, what's funny. It was, I was listening to something and, and it was Bible based um, and it was about the lost, uh, the lost book of Thomas. And I'm not sure if our, our mm. listeners or anybody, I had never heard of it until today. And the, the, the thing that it said that just intrigued me so much was that it talks about emotion and thought and how when you marry the two, that whatever you want can come to fruition, right? So that's manifestation. That's the how of manifestation. Yep. And I don't think that we realize that when we get in our grungies and our bad mood and our, we don't want to get this, you know, like that there's the thoughts and the emotion right there, you know? And so it can have a, a, a non-favorable effect as much as, much as it can have a favorable because we love manifestation, right? We think that's great, but we manifest the good and the bad, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, so I just, I was just like, you know, of course, that's been years and years I've known that, but to hear it put that way and to hear it, you know, really, it, it really had a profound effect on me because mm-hmm. seeing that even in the moment now, uh, when I begin to get overwhelmed, that if I just stop and go, you know what, this will all happen in the right time. This will all happen exactly when it's supposed to. I don't have to muscle my way through it. It feels so be- so much better, even if I just recognize it in that moment and um like i encourage people i i encourage our people to start noticing and start being aware of when you start to get bogged down when you get that little kink in the back of your neck that that you know it's from the stress that you're doing too much because that's your body that's your body's way of telling you that you're 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 human doing and not human being exactly and and i think that's a phrase that you know, we all need to remember that that yeah. difference between the human doing and, and the human being, which for me leads in into even the the next question of, so what is the point of work? And I think that's what we need to change our perspectives on and begin to understand, you know, what what is the point of all the things that we do and start prioritizing on is it really as important as I think it is Mm. um and you know in that sense start looking at you know if if if, like for me if my grandkid wants to do something and you know I'm like oh I got this other thing to do do I really yeah like what what was the point of that task right do I really have to do that task um so uh, okay So, so I'm interested to know when it comes to like a career or a job or things like that, what is your opinion on, you know, why we have to do those things? Cause I, I kind of have, you know, my own opinion and I just, I'm curious about yours. Well, my, my first answer is more of a cynical answer. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think most people, the, the reason they're working is they need the money to pay the bills. Sure. Okay. You know, and, and I, I would tend to think if you were to take the money out of the equations, say, you know what, there's no need for money. All bills are taken care of. You owe no money to anybody. Um, but hey, still go to work just because. Yeah. You know, I, I think the majority of people be like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, I'm just going to hang but, out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not going back to that office. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but let, let's take the cynical part of ways. You know, I, I think a, a number of people also like doing what they're doing. And for jobs that have an impact on society or others, I think there's a deeper sense of um, drive and desire to do some of those things. You know, like, like I would figure, you know, some of your first responders and um, your medical teams and you know, people like that is they're not all in it for the money. 
Right. I think if you took that out of the equation, you would still have a number of them saying, but I, I like doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, and there is some deeper level to it than just, uh, I'm, you know, making a paycheck. There's a passion, right? Is, is basically yeah. what I'm hearing from you. And I agree yeah. with that. And I think that in our life, that the work that we do really has to do with healing our soul. And so that's, that's for me, I think that where you're led in, in whatever kind of career it, you know, feel, it feeds your soul, it heals your soul. It get, you know, that passion mm -hmm. is 100% there. Um, and it reflects to you what you need to work on it. It's going to draw to you the people that are going to irritate you. And they're the people that are going to, uh, and I don't say that in a negative way. I really don't, but you know, there's, well, there's part of growth. You know, we were talking earlier about I'm a very organized person and I sit, tend to attract people who are not organized, which is, you know, um, something that I apparently need to heal because but once I get in there and I get that, you know, system in place, um, I feel like the system goes smoother and I feel like they think the system goes smoother and then we're no longer disorganized. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of went off a little topic, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I really do. I feel like that, you know, that, that tells me that in some lifetime and in, in this lifetime, even, you know, I have been very disorganized and have really caused chaos for a lot of people. So likely, you know, it's something that I get to heal, that I get to be free of guilt from. And, and, exactly. um, and so I think our careers help us to divulge that information and bring it up to help elevate us to a higher level of consciousness. And that's, yep. that's me doing it for you, doing for everybody who's listening, doing for my family, my friends as a oneness, when we all elevate ourselves, then we get higher and higher. We remember things better. And, and I mean, remembering as in like being one with the source, we remember that. Mm -hmm. um, and the people who may be doing things for that cynical reason, like you said, um, I think that they're just not there yet. I just don't think that right. they're, they're there yet. You know, and yeah. heck, a lot of our listeners might be like, eh, I'm not there yet either, <laughs> you know, but, but you'll get there. Then that's how the path works out. I mean, mm -hmm. it's in all good timing. And, and hopefully that's, you know, part of what, well, this podcast is, but, you know, part of what you and I do in, in our, you know, work is to help people to come to that. Yeah. So, you know, you, you're right when, when somebody isn't there yet or not ready yet or whatever, what do we do to help them to start to see it from a different way? And, and that's one of the things where, you know, I talk about perspective all the time and shifting that perspective. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm beginning to ask that question, you know, what is your work? I mean, your job, but even all the things that we do, you mm -hmm. know, like, you know, in cleaning the house and in, you know, just tasks like that, why are we doing them? And, and I think there's some valid reasons that can help, you know, uh, us internally. But do we ever ask a question versus just complain? You know, yeah, I've, I've got I don't want to do the dishes. Like, I don't want to oh, do the laundry. The house, <laughs> um, so so uh, my, one of my teachers uh, teaches me a lot about being the seed in the soil. Right. Because like there are um, times that Chris and I, you have, you and I have worked together and you have been the soil for me to blossom, right? I was your, I was the seed, you were the soil. And, and in our work and, and I think in our lives in general, that's what we all are. Sometimes we're the seed, sometimes we're the soil. Sometimes we're the ones that are learning and absorbing the information and growing. And then sometimes we are, we are the, the space for other people to grow. And, um, and I think that, that that's a tremendous um, responsibility sometimes for us. But when you, take, when you take out the doing and you notice that it's really all about the being, the you know, being kind and opening the door or you know, um, saying please and thank you. And, and, and you know, there's some judgment in there for the good and the bad, the, the clean right. house, the dirty house, things like that. Oh, I, yeah. I, I see how people might go, I don't know if I agree with that, but um, I think that, I think that the space that you create draws the people to you that can learn from you and can grow in your space. So I think that that's a, 
you know, it, it kind of will take the doing out of out of those kind of things. Mm-hmm. You know, the mundane well, tasks. Very poetically put. Thanks. <laughs> At first, I thought you were saying that I'm just the the surface everybody tramples on. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> I'm the nice flower that, that yeah. blooms and you're the one that everybody tramples. <laughs> um, so, yeah. see, this is why you're more of the poet and I'm the cynic. That's right. But, right? Uh, <laughs> we, we're good. We're a good vibe. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but very well put. Yeah. Um, b- because, you know, I, I totally agree in the way that I look at it, you know, in, in my own life and the story that I have on my website and that, you know, I do talk about is, you know, I, I was very type a very stressed very um you know much when i was doing more um corporate type stuff and you know kind of like moving up and you know when you look at all of that and and what stressors and work that brings and so i kind of got rid of that shifted my perspective you know look at life different and you know some people you know said well how is it really different because look at all the stuff you're still doing so like isn't it the same you know what what, what's what's different and i think the key and we've mentioned some of i mean you know the passion the drive you know things like that but i think the other key to all of that and what's worked for me is choice yeah what are we choosing to do which i think goes back to you know asking that question you know why are we doing what we're doing but part of that would be that choice so I'm not stuck in doing all the things that I do. Hmm. I'm choosing to do those things, which gives a different mindset. Yeah. Then, well, I have to do all of these things because I'm trying to reach a certain goal that may or may not be attainable, but I got to do to get there. Where here, it's more kind of that being, you know, to enrich the being. What are some of the things that I choose to work on? Do? I also hear in that, that you've created an environment that you can thrive in, right? So you've brought passion in, you've brought that, that feminine energy, so to speak, where you get to create what's going on Mm -hmm. in in your reality, right? And um, God, it sounds so much more peaceful and so much more joyful because you get to choose those things. And and it really is. I mean, you, even on days like today, when, you know, it, it's back to back things and, you know, you could say like, oh, man, you know, why do you do a podcast? Why are you doing this? You know, that that could be something you could just you know, wipe away and have an hour to whatever. But again, it goes back to, well, that's a passion. That's yeah. part of the drive. That's part of the, the creativity of the whole brand, but more so me. So I'm choosing to do it where I'm not feeling, well, if I don't do it, you know, X, Y, Z will happen. No, I'm choosing on a positive thing. I'm choosing to do it. Well, and it's, there's a flow. I mean, there's, there's some weeks where we're like, okay, we have our intention to do this, you know, on a regular base schedule, but if things come up, it's like, oh yeah, sure. Okay. No problem. We can't do it today. No big deal. It's not Mm -hmm. a mandatory, like, oh, well, you're late. You should have been here. You know, I mean, I did kind of ask you that today, but it wasn't like that. (laughs) Oh no, 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 no. (laughs) Nor did I take it that way. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Good. But, um, you know, we, it's, uh, it is. It's, it's fun. It's something that we get to do. We get to deepen a, a, a conversation between us. We hope to, of course, affect our listeners. And um, who knows how far the effect of, of that can go. Somebody might be like, oh, wow, I didn't realize I was overdoing. And, and you know, how can, I, how can I relax more? Oh, we have a relaxed podcast. You can listen to that one too. Hint, hint. <laughs> but, um, you know, we... we uh, I'll try we, to remember to link to that one. Down, yeah, it'd be uh, amazing, right? <laughs> But, um, you know, that's the point. The point is a peaceful mind is so much more of a fun playground to be in than, yep. than a busy, um, overwhelmed, stressed out, un, you know, unfun one. Right. So so that's why we want to part of that. Yeah. And, and I think part of that, it really comes into shifting that perspective, because for some people who are listening, you know, I'm not necessarily saying that the way you're living your life right now isn't a good way of living it. 
Sure. So you may be doing a lot of things and you may be totally stressed out and it's like, but how do I get rid of some of this or how maybe you don't, but what you do work on is what we've been talking about. Shift your perspective on it. Yeah. And maybe look at it from more of a, is this a passion of mine? Is this something that's driven, you know, and, and what I can do is, can I be creative with it? You know, start looking at it from those viewpoints and, and what choices you can make is going to shift yeah. that whole process around. And you might not even have to change anything in, in what you're doing, but you're shifting it from the doing to the being. So, so is that a listener challenge that I hear? Is to, is to learn how to weave those kind of questions about being creative and, and sharing your passion and being more passionate into your work, into your day, into your doing. Is that something that, you know? I, I think that that is a perfect um perfect challenge yeah i mean and that's and, just, and i was pausing there only because i was actually writing that down oh <laughs> it's it's you know it's just it's just a reflection it's just for you to take five minutes uh or you know take a few seconds it doesn't have to be five minutes just as you're going through like how can i create and be passionate about what i'm doing right now rather than feeling like it's something that just needs to be done yeah exactly that's and and I think if if we look hard enough, you could probably do that with everything that we're doing. Everything. I, I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually going to use that word. I, I rarely use <laughs> a word that you know has no out, but yeah. I, I I would think that there's enough creativeness in people that we could probably say that for everything. Well, it'd be you know like it's uh it's like you naming your bugs. You know, it's like you just have fun with it and, and, you know, yeah. you got to cut the grass. Well, you know, maybe, maybe you sing while you're doing it, or maybe you listen to the music or, you know, maybe you're cutting little patterns in the grass. Who knows? <laughs> I, be creative. But when I was uh, younger and first cutting the grass at my parents, I used to come up with the stories of what was happening in the grass. Oh yeah. The poor little blades of bugs. Grass. <laughs> you know, yeah, well, you see those and you see the bugs roaming around. So you start thinking, well, you know, this is, a, you know, a bug city and yeah, is this a yeah. tornado, is this a hurricane, you know, what what are they thinking? What's going on? And you, you all that's flashing running. before my eyes right now is honey, I shrunk the kids. So, I mean, <laughs> and look, look yeah. what that did for somebody, right? Like that same yeah. kind of, that same mentality has created somebody a billion dollar idea. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I had that idea before somebody else put it into billions oh, of dollars and I don't have billions. Thieved you. <laughs> um, you know, but you know, I mean, by the time you start doing that, next thing you know, the grass is done. Absolutely. And, yeah. and it wasn't the chore that, you know, you walked into it going like, oh, I don't want to waste all this time just cutting this grass yeah. and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And yeah, sometimes yeah. you just got to pay somebody to do it because you don't want to do it at all. <laughs> I'm kind of at that point now. But I'm <laughs> yeah, me too. So, <laughs> oh yeah but that, that's what i said in my younger days when i was a kid <laughs> yeah that's it using that's the it. old push mower i i mean we got one of those zero turns and i don't have to touch it it takes will like 20 minutes to cut five acres so i'm like oh thanks hon. one last thing i have nice. to do yeah nice. well so, good. i think that was really good today i uh, i like it and uh hopefully we get uh a lot of good comments from our listeners on how you can meet that challenge. And, um, and then maybe the side challenge, you know, let, let's see, is, is there anything that somebody can't come up with a creative way to look at yeah, finding we... passion in something you're doing? And we could even open that up and just say, okay, you can't find it. Can anybody else find a way? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, through the listener challenge, how many people take this and and start to tap into that imagination we used to use as kids yep. because that's where the magic lives i really am a, a firm believer exactly. of that that's where the magic is exactly well awesome. i think that was a great talk today i really appreciate your time chris and thank you yep. to all and of yours. our listeners yep 
So I encourage all of you to, you know, use uh, the like buttons and comment buttons and, uh, you know, share this with your friends. All right. You guys take care. All right. All right you too. All right. Bye.